Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief at Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at FlexLogic with Salvador Alvarez, who's going to talk today about how to speed up AI algorithms. Salvador, when you think about AI, it's all about performance and power, basically moving data through a chip at very high speed, right? That's right, and it's even more important when you're running on the edge, because usually the devices are on-site and have a limited power budget, but you still want that real-time performance to do your analysis. So how do you get there? All right. So what we've done is we've designed a chip that is extremely efficient at running vision AI models. And this allows us to be able, with the high efficiency, to run very quickly in a much smaller form factor. If you look at some of the other solutions today with GPU, what you're essentially doing is only running about 5% of the chip on a huge power budget. And that is not scalable as you try to deploy on the edge. Let's take a closer look. Sure, absolutely. Salvador, what are we looking at here? Well, what we're looking at here is a, we're processing a video. And as you can see, there's many objects in this video. And the, all of the objects are being detected in real time. And the performance is not degraded, regardless of how many objects are in the are in the video itself. And this is all running on our M2 card. And it may be a little hard to see black on black, but there's a small HP off the shelf machine that we have. We just plugged in our M2 and we're able to offload the AI processing onto our small M2 form factor and give real time performance. What do you have to do in able to be able to actually track all these different objects in motion? Well, the, in order to track all these objects with high accuracy, we need a high performing model. And a lot of the best models require a lot of parameters. And to process all those parameters very quickly in a small device, it's really all about efficiency. And so we're able to take a large model very effect efficiently, not waste any cycles or very few to process an image in real time. And you think about how this is going to be applied, it's probably got applications in security, it's got applications in when you're driving down the road, it's got lots of different uh, ways that this will be used. Does it now apply into every system? Do you need to do anything special in order to accommodate all this? No, so it, as you mentioned, it does apply into all sorts of different scenarios. And when we're talking about edge computing, there's always uh, the requirement that you want uh, very low latency or on-premise. So for example, medical offices, you need it You need for privacy. They don't want to send things to the cloud. For security, uh, you want to also keep that close to where the action is happening and, and also not let people hack into your systems. And so there's a lot of considerations of why you would want to do this on the edge in real time. And so for those, uh, for those applications, we're trying to, uh, to fit into the current uh, systems that people are using. For example, for factories, one issue there is heat. Uh, a lot of these factories are in, in very hot, humid weather locations. And so being able to take a small chip that uses low power and, um, and not overheat in the summer months is very important. How much is data moving back and forth between uh processing elements and memory? And what do you do in terms of the memory architecture? So our chip provides some memory in so that once we get the memory in, we're trying to keep everything local in, inside the chip and reduce the amount of access to VRAM. And, that, and once we're able to, with our L0 and L1 caches, as long as we can keep all the data in there, we can run extremely uh, fast or keep things extremely efficient. And one of the challenges with all this stuff is you really need to be able to limit the distance that the data travels, right? Right. Uh, and so it's very important that we're not, we're not uh, sending data back and forth between the R card and the CPU, that once you send the image, we can go ahead and process everything on the chip. One of the big challenges that we, is that we have so much data that's moving in, and you, you look at this picture, it's lots of moving pieces. You want to be able to process or pre-process some of that and get rid of some of that data as quickly as possible, right? That's right. And so there's actually, when we're talking about data, there's two aspects of data. There's the model, the data that's in the model, the weights and 
biases, and there's the image itself. For the weights and biases, they're all preloaded into our chip. And so in, as we're running the model, it's already on the chip, and there's no access to have to fetch the weights and bias. And we've also added a, a small DRAM on, on our board so that we really can eliminate the need to go back outside of our card for data. So once we send the image in, we're really trying to keep all the data access local uh, so that we can minimize those memory access. So what happens on the algorithm side? Is that a fi fixed algorithm or does it change as you go forward? Yeah, that's a great question. So what we've done is we are taking in the model and because we are using our uh, embedded FPGA technology inside our ASIC, what we're able to do is we, we preload the configuration. And so the chip itself knows that I'm going to run this layer in this configuration. And once it's done, it automatically reconfigures itself for the next layer. And it continues doing that all within the chip itself. And this is one of the big advantages that you're starting to see out in the marketplace, right? Because now you're, you're taking chips and matching them to the software that's going to run on them and saying, okay, this is exactly what we're trying to do. We don't have to do everything. We're trying, just trying to do this. That's right. And one other advantage that, that this gives us is where some other solutions may be uh, limited by the hardware elements available to them. Uh, for us, we're, uh, we can take any size model, although it comes at the expense of more time, obviously. The more layers you have, it, the more the the more time it will take to run, but we won't hit a limit of running out of hardware elements to run a model. Salvador Alvarez, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you very much, Ed.